Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Chapter 9.2, Part A. Uh, we're just going to talk about arithmetic sequences for the first time today. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use sequences to write recursive formulas. We're going to be able to find the like, unknown term uh, of a sequence, or really any term of a sequence. And we're also going to be able to find the first term and the difference given any two terms. So let's begin. Let's first start out just by talking about what arithmetic sequences are. Uh, in arithmetic sequences, arithmetic sequences have a common difference. That's important, so I'll underline it. They have a common difference represented by D. And we're going to go through some examples of what those are. Basically, there's a bunch of numbers that follow a pattern, and we call that pattern the common difference. So, for example, if we have the sequence, let's say we've had 7, 11, 15, 19, and then we had a dot, dot, dot. Maybe it just kept going. This is an arithmetic sequence, and here's why. When we go from 7 to 11, we're adding 4. When we go from 11 to 15, we're adding 4. We go from 15 to 19, we're also adding 4. Uh, that's what we're calling the common difference. The difference between each term is the same. Here's how we can write a formula for this. Uh, we can think of 7, 11, 15, and 19. We can think of them like this. Uh, as 7 can be represented as 1 times 4 plus 3. 11 can be represented as 2 times 4 plus 3. 15 is 3 times 4 plus 3. And 19 is 4 times 4 times 4 plus 3. And so you can see what's happening every single time is we're multiplying by 4 and we're adding 3. So what we can conclude then, our formula should be for this, is 4n plus 3, where we substitute the n value in and we get the next term. And this is a recursive formula. Okay. Uh, let's do another example. This is a sequence as well. So 2, negative 3, negative 8, negative 13, dot, dot, dot. Uh, the common difference here can be found if we do 2 minus... If we do 2 minus 5, we get negative 3. If we do negative 3 minus 5, we get negative 8. If we do negative 8 minus 5, we get negative 13. And so we can see then the common difference that's happening here is minus 5. Uh, and what we can do here is we can look at what's happening between each thing. So I'm going to get another color. It's a little bit easier to see. Alrighty. Now, let me grab a different one. Uh, so, what we can do is we can look at each term here and we can describe it as 7 minus a multiple of 5. So, uh, what I mean by that is we can look at 2 as 7 minus 5 times 1. And 3 is the same as saying 7 minus 5 times 2. And 8 is the same as saying 7 minus 5 times 3. And negative 13 is the same as saying 7 minus 5 times 4. And so we can see those end values, 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's where they are. And what's happening to them is subtracting uh, from 7 and multiplying by 5. So our formula that we arrive at is 
7 minus 5n. And again, this is what we call a recursive formula. Okay, uh, let's make a quick note here. I'm going to do a little asterisk, whatever you want to help yourself remember with. Sequences with formulas with an exponent, with n to an exponent, anything involving exponential, uh, are not arithmetic. Sequences, pardon me, with n squared are not arithmetic. Only where we're multi doing uh, multiples of a number or adding or subtracting constants, but never when we have an exponent would that be a, an arithmetic sequence. Okay. Uh, let's talk about finding the nth term. Finding the nth term, that's always fun to say, nth. And here's, oh, pardon me, there we go, sorry. Uh, here's how we can do that. Uh, the formula for every arithmetic sequence looks like this. a sub n equals d n plus c. And here's what each piece means. d is just the common difference. c is represented as a sub 1 minus the difference. So let's use this in an example. Let's say we were looking to uh, find the formula for the arithmetic sequence whose common difference is 3 and whose first term is 2. Uh, it may not seem like they gave us much, but they actually did. We actually have most of this filled out, even though it's not 100% uh, super duper obvious. Uh, what we can begin by setting up is just rewriting that formula once more so we know where we're headed. a sub n equals dn plus c. And now let's think about each piece that we are already given. Uh, we know that the common difference is 3. So this letter d here, I can actually substitute in a 3 for. And c, let's think about c for a second. We know the first term is 2, and remember, c is just the first term minus the difference, a sub 1 minus the difference. So, since a sub 1 is 2, and the difference is 3, c is actually 2 minus 3, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So that means right here, for c, I'm going to fill in negative 1, 3n minus 1. And there we've done it. We've found the formula for the sequence. Uh, let's do another example. But this time, what if we're not given a sub 1 in the difference? This time, let's say that the fourth term, oh, pardon me, is 20 and the 13th term is 65. Write the first several terms of the sequence. Sequence, there we go. Uh, and here's what we can write down. There's kind of an interesting conclusion we can come to. I'm going to write it, and then I'm going to explain it. We can say a sub 13 equals a sub 4 plus 9 times the difference. And I'm going to explain why this is true. 
Uh, let's say we're over here at a sub 4. Uh, what I would be doing then to find the missing terms here for 5, for 6, for 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, here we are at a sub 13, is I would be adding the difference 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times. I could start at a sub 4, and then I'd have to add the difference nine times to fill in those nine missing terms to get to a sub 13. That's why this formula right here works. Uh, and what I can do from here is I can fill in the values I was given. I was given that a sub 13 is 65. And I was given that a sub 4 was 20. Uh, and I can fill those numbers into my formula here as well. So I can say that a sub 13 is actually 65, and a sub 4 is actually 20, plus 9 times the difference. This is just a two-step equation. Now, uh, when I subtract 20 from both sides, I get 45 equals 9 times the difference. And when I divide by 9, I get that d equals 5. Great, so now I know the difference. What I don't have yet is the, uh, the first term. Uh, but what I do have is some information. I know, just like I set up the other one, I can say the following formula. I can say a sub 4, or pardon me, I can say a sub 1 equals a sub 4 minus 3 times the difference. And again, I'll draw out why that is true. Uh, here's a sub 1. Here's the very beginning of our sequence. Here's the second. Here's the third. And here's the fourth term, a sub 4. To work backwards here, I would have to subtract the difference, subtract the difference, and subtract the difference again to get to this first term. Uh, and that's why I can say a sub 1 equals a sub 4 minus 3 of the differences. And again, given this formula, I actually have a bunch of information I can fill in. I know already that a sub 4 is the value 20 minus 3 times, well I know the difference, I just found it, is 5. And so I get 20 minus 15, and I find that a sub 1 equals 5. And from all this information, I can start to fill in some missing things. Uh, I know that the first term now is 5. And if I use the difference, right, if I do my little plus 5s every time, I would get 10. And if I use the difference again, my next term would be 15. If I use the difference again, my next term would be 20. We'll do one more. If I use the common difference once more, uh, I would get 25. And we can just do a dot, dot, dot. But that's how we can kind of create a sequence when we're not given the first term or the difference. Uh, and that would be our sequence. We can just kind of box that off as our answer. Okay. Moving on, let's talk about... One last thing before I let you go. Uh, let's find the ninth term of the arithmetic sequence that begins with 2 and 9. And here's what they mean by begins with 2 and 9. Uh, they mean that the first two terms are 2 and 9. So this is all we know so far. You can just kind of write that down. Uh, but from that, think about it. We're actually given some pretty useful information. We're given the common difference. Given it's an arithmetic sequence, it has to have a common difference. And so that means if I go from 2 to 9, I'll find it. And to go from 2 to 9, I'd have to add 7. So that means then that my difference is 7 plus 7. Uh, and I also know, just by looking at it, that my a sub 1 is 2. 
And so then, uh, what I can do here is I can recall that C is just A sub 1 minus the difference. So C is 2 minus 7. C is negative 5. I can use all this information to fill in my arithmetic sequence formula. Um, the difference times n um, plus c. So I actually have the difference. I can fill that in with 7. a sub n equals 7n. And I can fill in the c value, which is negative 5. That's great. Now I have a formula that's really helpful, but I haven't found the ninth term yet. Here's how I can. I can take this formula and I can substitute in 9 for n. So I can say a sub 9 equals 7 times 9 minus 5. And when I do that math, I get 63 minus 5, which gets me 58. And so I can say the ninth term is 58. And that is my answer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in class tomorrow.